Local Bowling Alleys on History Talk, where we take a look at the people, places, and events that shaped our community. History Talk streams exclusively Thursdays at 10 a.m. on KFYR+. Bowling has always been a popular outing for locals. Along with billiards and cards, it was one of the earliest forms of local entertainment. Bismarck and Mandan have both seen many bowling alleys through its years. Luxury hotels once offered them as an amenity for their guests. Later, dedicated bowling centers arrived, including Bismarck Bowling Center, Capital Lanes, and Midway Lanes. The first report of a bowling alley in Bismarck was in 1873, the year following its formation. A report the following year also indicated a single bowling bowling alley in the city. Bowling alleys were popular amenities at local hotels for many years. The Northwest Hotel, considered the city's finest lodging facility at the time, added a bowling alley to the basement in 1901. Two additional lanes were added in 1904. Completed in 1907, the Grand Pacific Hotel also boasted bowling alleys. The Freemason Temple was built to house a basement bowling alley as well, and bowling alleys would pop up at other establishments throughout the years. Bismarck Bowling Center opened in 1946. It was originally located at 119 North 5th Street, today's site of the Parkade. In about 1956, the center relocated to 305 North 23rd Street. At the time, it operated 12 lanes, the most in North Dakota, and it was the only bowling alley in the state with an automatic pin center. It expanded to 20 lanes in 1960. The Zons retired in 1978. The center closed in 1983. Midway Lanes is the largest bowling center in Bismarck Mandan, with 52 current lanes. Opened in 1961 with 20 lanes along Mandan Strip, Midway Lanes has seen several expansions and renovations over the years. Jim Mellon took over Midway Lanes in early 1967, owning and running it until retiring in 2023. Ten Spot Lanes is another longtime bowling center located in Mandan. It appears to have opened in October 1958 making it the oldest surviving bowling alley in the region. Capital Lanes was a 50-lane bowling center located at 1237 West Divide Avenue that operated from December 1980 until closing in 2004. It was the area's largest bowling center during its operation. The Sagsvin family established Capital Lanes on December 30, 1980, with 24 lanes, four more than Mandan's Midway Lanes at the time. The facility expanded one year later to 40 lanes, and then again in 1983 to 50 lanes. There is a common rumor that some of the lanes and equipment was repurposed from Bismarck Bowling Center, shuttered that same year, but news reportings of the time state that those were actually sent to a Minnesota bowling alley. Indeed, Capital Lanes was almost complete with its expansion at the time Bismarck Bowling Center closed. Capital Lanes closed in May 2004. Since then, Midway Lanes has expanded to 52 lanes, two more than Capital Lanes previously had. Today, the former Bowling Alley houses West Central Human Services. The broader Capital Lanes Plaza housed many other tenants. Complementing its bowling alley on the upper floor were a cafe, bar, and arcade. For some time, its cafe housed a Piccadilly Circus Pizza franchise. Below the bowling alley, over time housed D&D Foods, a golf store, a liquor store, a package store, a nursery, and a stationary supply store, as well as Hare Hospital. It was the depot for the Greyhound bus for many years as well. A Conoco gas station was located on the northwest corner. Its owners established another Conoco on the other side of, of the interstate bridge in 1996, replacing the Truck Plaza 35 truck stop on that site. That is the gas station immediately next to the Tyler Parkway McDonald's, which opened the following year. Local bowling alleys achieved national attention when, in 1989, they partnered to house the Women's International Bowling Congress, or WIBC, tournament. At the time, it was the biggest event hosted in North Dakota, drawing in 44,000 people over the course of the tournament, roughly doubling Bismarck's population at the time. By comparison, the annual McQuaid's Charity Softball Tournament draws in about 20,000 people. By Monday, more than 41,000 lady bowlers from all over the world will have spent time in North Dakota during the course of the nine-week WIBC tournament and convention. Despite some glitches during convention week, the bowlers leave satisfied with their stay. Officials estimate the lady bowlers will have left more than $20 million in Bismarck and Mandan for food and fun, services and souvenirs. 
Executive Director for the Bismarck Mandan Convention and Visitors Bureau, Terry Harzinski, says that kind of economic impact may never come again. But Harzinski says the two cities at least have the satisfaction of having hosted the biggest convention to ever come to North Dakota. Bismarck Mandan beat out Fort Worth, Tampa, and Niagara Falls to host the event that year because it was pitched to help celebrate North Dakota's centennial probably helped win support. I invite you to check out my two Bismarck history books. They are available to purchase on Amazon and select local bookstores. Copies are also available at the Bismarck Public Library. Visit bismarckbook.com for more information. That was our look at the local history of bowling alleys. Is there a history topic you'd like to be featured? Email history talk at kfyrtv.com.